Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Stephanie Reads. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. Let me see if I can get it in. You don't need to see my face, right? <laughs> um, this is my well-loved copy from the library. I, I have only read it once. I haven't well-loved it, but... Uh, this is a book that I wanted to read for October because I heard it was kind of spooky and creepy and that's kind of the vibe I wanted to get in the month of October. Don't mind whatever's going on back here. I don't know. And if you saw my October wrap up, you kind of got my thoughts on the book. Um, but I wanted to also give you the breakdown of the kind of mechanics of the book. So that way you had more than just my opinion and how I felt about it to go on to see if it was something you wanted to read or not. So let's get started. So for the first part, oh, first of all, I want to do a little blurb about Agatha Christie because I thought this was really cool. So it says on the back of the book, this is literally just me reading off the back of the book. Agatha Christie is the most widely published author of all time, outsold only by the Bible and Shakespeare. That's sink in for a little bit. The Bible and Shakespeare. Her books have sold more than a billion, with a B, billion copies in English and another billion in a hundred foreign languages. A hundred foreign languages. And then it ends with, she died in 1976, which kind of seems like a random tack on at the end, but whatever. <laughs> so I had no idea she was that prolific. I mean, I knew she's like a powerhouse and a staple of fiction, especially like, especially the mystery genre. But I didn't realize literally only outsold by the Bible and Shakespeare. Like I had no idea. So I thought that was really cool. So if you didn't see my blurb about it in my October wrap up, just for those who don't know, the plot of this is these 10 people are tricked more or less into going out to this island for well, I, they all think they're going for different reasons. Some people think they're getting a job. Other people think that they're going to see old friends. Um, but all of them are expecting to stay for at least a weekend, if not a, like all summer long. Um, so they get out to this island and there's just one house on the island. It's owned by this like reclusive, is reclusive a word? This rich recluse, <laughs> there we go. And not really anything is known about the owner or about the house or about the island, really. There's like all kinds of rumors. And um, so they're all like excited to go and see the house and they're all excited to start their jobs or whatever. So they get there and it starts out with the butler and his wife basically being like, oh, we're sorry, the hosts aren't here they went to the mainland for something and they got held up they'll be here tomorrow and then we find out that they were all brought there under false pretenses and then they start dying off one by one and in each of their rooms is a i don't know if this is actually a british nursery rhyme or if this is something that was made up for the book since i'm not british i don't know but um there's a British nursery rhyme in all of... Sorry, I'm trying to take a sip of my tea and I'm trying to make sure I don't splash it on myself because it's still super hot. So there's a British nursery rhyme in all of their rooms that talks about these 10... It starts out like there were 10 soldiers and then one such and such happened to one and then there were nine. And there were nine soldiers and then such and such happened and now there are eight, so on and so forth. And so the way that they all end up dying one at a time mirrors this uh, nursery rhyme. So you have this mystery of which one of them is the killer and also how are they doing it? Because as the number of people narrows down, it gets more and more difficult to for somebody to be pulling something off without the others knowing because there's only like four people and they can see each other at all times. So you're like, how is this happening? And um, it is a mystery that is, you are, I guarantee you're not going to solve. You may figure out who, I did not, but you may figure out who, but I guarantee you are not going to figure out how. <laughs> so um, if it is, you know, 
just to warn you, if you're someone who likes to be able to try and like figure out, guess who it is before the end, you'll never get it. But I think this is the only Agatha Christie book I've ever read, but I think that's kind of quintessentially her thing. I used to watch a lot of um, Masterpiece Theater when I was a kid, and they had a whole series called Hercule Poirot. And it's based off of a, a series by Agatha Christie. She ha she has several, you know, she's got like Miss Marple and um, anyway. So I have seen a bunch of shows based off of her books and her characters. So this seems kind of, like I said, quintessentially Agatha Christie. The pacing of the book is fast paced almost to a fault. Um, I had a hard time keeping the characters straight because I mean the whole book is only the whole book is only 247 pages and you have 10 characters. So not a lot of time or page space can be dedicated to any one character to get a feel for any of them. So the characters you get basically like a paragraph on each character when they're introduced at the beginning of the book and beyond that you just have them referenced by their name. So there's not really any character development. It is all about the mystery and people start dying like almost immediately. So it is very fast paced. It is a super fast read. The characters, like, like I said, I wrote down they're quickly revealed and they're not very um, developed. So there's no character development to weigh the book down. Um, it's there's a lot of dialogue which also helps the book move along faster which makes it a, a lighter read it's like i said the pace is quick from the very beginning like you're only like 30 pages in or so when people start dying so uh really in that also not only does it make the book feel really fast paced but it's really compelling because immediately you know something's not right and you're excited to see, or at least I was excited to see where it's going to go. Like I knew the general gist of the book before I went into it, but I didn't know how it was going to happen. And so that was really interesting. For the characterization, because there is so little character development, the characters are very distant and you don't, it's not it's not even possible to like identify with them you are kind of just expected to observe I feel like Phil I feel like that it almost had the feeling of um I feel like it almost had the feeling for me the story almost had the feeling of like a kid watching an ant farm I mean a very interesting ant farm but you know the kid watching the ant farm isn't gonna have like favorite ants and it's not there he's not going to have like a backstory for all the ants and stuff so it kind of had that feel to it where you're just watching an experiment go on and that was done intentionally she there are things that she writes in the book especially at the end where it's like being revealed how this was done where basically this is like a an experiment in humanity and so I don't want to make it sound like there's no character development and that's a fault of the writing. That was a conscious choice that she made. So it is what it is, but I'm letting you know, here's how it is in case that's not your cup of tea. The storyline is, it's very plot centered. Like, I mean, ex extremely plot center. Like I said, there's no character development. There's very little description. They're on a tiny island with one house on it. And there's minimal description of the house. They basically say there's nowhere to hide in the house. It's modern design. And that's the extent of the description of the house. So this is plot only, like with no frills. And that's fine. I was absolutely okay with that. My main fault of this book is I went in expecting something really atmospheric and creepy. And she, the only atmosphere is through the plot. There's no actual like atmosphere created and a setting. There's no scene given. There's no, 
like atmosphere is the best word I can uh, describe it. And also because there's not a lot of character development, you aren't able to kind of put yourself in the character's shoes and feel creeped out because someone's coming for you. So I absolutely would not describe this as creepy for those reasons. I mean, I guess if you're very, very sensitive, it might be creepy. But if you're very, very sensitive, I can't imagine this being the kind of book you want to read anyway. So I just wanted to clear the air. Like, I actually really did enjoy this book, but I would not at all describe it as creepy, even though I watched other people describe it that way. So that's kind of my my feeling on the matter and that's my justification for it is there's just there's nothing but plot here and that wasn't enough to set a a scene for me i mean i there was this anyway i feel like i'm way over explaining this so the storyline is all about the situation it is not about the people other than their kind of pieces that are being moved around but not because you're not getting like real reactions from them or anything other than they're they kind of all freak out every time somebody dies which is fair i wrote that the focus is psychological and interior which seems kind of an oxymoron given what i just said but you get it it, it is because by the end of the book there's so few characters left that they're not really you are getting them kind of monologuing because they aren't, they're too afraid to interact with one another and there aren't very many people to interact with. So you get them kind of just sitting there and you're, you're hearing their thoughts instead of getting dialogue. So it doesn't really help develop the characters much at all other than you do get kind of some flashbacks towards the end of the book to get a little bit more backstory, but it's not a lot. Um, now, this book, the, for the storyline, there is some explicit violence. I mean, like, several of the people are poisoned, so whatever. But there are a few that are murdered in more physically intense ways. It's not, I mean, it's not a gore fest or anything. But just so you know, not everybody dies in a peaceful way in their sleep. And the plot is really complex, which I liked because the plot is all you've got in this book. And again, that was a conscious choice by Agatha Christie. Like, it's very obvious that it was intentional. So I'm fine with it. But it is something you need to know going in because if you're expecting more, you're going to be super disappointed. Because at first when I finished reading this, I was kind of annoyed because I was expecting more. And so I wanted to warn you, like, this is plot only but the plot is really complex and has a lot of twists and I loved it I thought the story is fantastic the frame and the tone so the the frame is this island with this one house on it but the background is super minimal like I said you don't get any description of the island other than they have searched everywhere and there's nowhere to hide and you don't get any description of the house either that other than it's super modern no expense was spared when it was built and there's nowhere to hide <laughs> um and there's so that's the frame the tone is dark foreboding menacing suspenseful i mean not enough to be creepy but suspenseful because you just don't know who's going next or how I mean, you have an idea because of the nursery rhyme, but some of them you're like, how are they going to pull that off? Um, and the I wrote, I don't normally write anything about the, n make any notes about the writing style, but I wrote that the writing style was really austere and stark because, I mean, this is a lot of plot. And like I said, 10 characters and you have 274 pages. This is almost a novella. <laughs> So it's a very stark writing style. And I, I thought it was interesting because I've never read anything by her before. And I mean, a lot of times you have the authors kind of creative about how they outline a conversation. So they don't have to be like so-and-so said, and then so-and-so said, and then so-and-so said. And her writing style is literally 
so-and-so said, colon, and then like a list of the things they said. And then so-and-so said, and a colon, and a list of the things they said. Not that you can even remotely see this, but, um, and it's the same way when someone's monologuing in their head, it'll be so-and-so thought, colon, next line, and then a paragraph of what they're thinking to themselves. Um, so, like I said, this is a no frills book. Like the writing style is no frills. The setting is no frills. It is just a plot. And it's almost like reading an outline. <laughs> I mean, a very well fleshed out outline. So you have a legitimate full story, but there are no frills. So if that's your thing, it's a super fast, super easy read with a really interesting story. Um, I don't know that I'm going to be picking up many more of her books, though, because I I don't know. I, I feel like I really wanted to know what happened. So I was I enjoyed it all the way to the end, but I, I only gave it like I think three stars on Goodreads just because. It, I really need more of a more to a story, like more meat on the bones. And like, I can't fault the story itself, but as the book is for the book as a whole, I felt like it was kind of missing something for me personally. But if you are okay with like just a bare bones story, the, the, like I said, the story itself was great. So um, if you wanted to know more about my personal opinions on it, you can check out my Goodreads. Um, which my Goodreads review, which I'll link below. And also I talked about it pretty in depth in my October recap wrap up, my October wrap up. So I'll link that at the end of the video. But yeah, so that was Agatha Christie's, ooh, Agatha Christie's and then there were none. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did give the video a thumbs up and until next time, happy reading. Mm -hmm.